हेलो एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सो लवली टू सी ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप यू आर ऑल प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर बोथ द एग्जाम एज वेल एज द न्यू ईयर कमिंग अप सो स्टडी हार्ड सो यू कैन पार्टी हार्डर ऑन द न्यू ईयर सी सो राइट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सीरीज ऑन रोमेटोलॉजी I am Dr. Srina Chandramani. I'll be taking you through some the topics of rheumatology along with image-based questions. Right. So good evening to all of you. I'm happy to see all of you joining me on this YouTube channel. So let's get started. So always it is for those who have attended our class and those who are new students aspiring to learn rheumatology we will start with this small introduction just a one slide introduction that what is rheumatology to most of the medical students rheumatology is like a super specialty subject and we have very limited knowledge we have very limited knowledge in rheumatology because in most medical colleges we don't really present any case of rheumatology for majority of us rheumatology means what starts with sle ends with ra that is the two things that are there in rheumatology yeah so you can go ahead put your doubts in any question yes on the chat uh, hari priya we will try to answer it along the way so rheumatology is basically the study of systemic autoimmune disease so whenever you see any patient with autoimmune disease having multi organ involvement then you label the patient as a case of rheumatology whenever the disease is restricted to a particular organ or a particular system they are treated by the subject specialist for example all of you will agree that myasthenia gravis is also an autoimmune disease which is best treated by the neurologist rheumatic fever also is an autoimmune disease which is best treated by the cardiologist so who are we today we are the rheumatologist we will treat only those autoimmune disorders which present with multi organ involvement that is the main point about rheumatology so in rheumatology since the patient has a common pathology the clinical symptoms can look similar like many patient in the clinic you will see have got a skin rash many patient will have joint pain yeah so these are the two common symptoms which i have chosen for today's image theme so we will focus i mean there are so many images in rheumatology let us focus on some common theme that is skin involvement that is cutaneous involvement and joint related questions we will deal with today rheumatology topics are sub classified into five groups the common ones of course are the lupus group of diseases which is most common followed by arthritis group of diseases we have myositis syndromes we have vasculitis syndromes and we have got overlap syndromes so there are totally five groups in rheumatology that we learn about right so let us start with our first question today let us start with first question today we are familiar that most common antibody associated with the autoimmune disease is ana ana is our anti nuclear antibody which is having ana anti nuclear antibody has 98% sensitivity and that is why it is used for the screening hence it is used for the screening of autoimmune disease so whenever you have a patient with suspected autoimmune disease whether it is organ specific or whether it is systemic we are going to ask for ana testing but the best method to check for ana is the immunofluorescence method when you do ana by immunofluorescence method we are going to get both the titers of ana in the plasma along with the 
ANA pattern on immunofluorescence. So very good. All of you are right that the most probable diagnosis in this rheumatology disease in the ANA pattern is SLE. But also name the pattern for me. What is the pattern of ANA that we can see on the display? We can see that the ANA staining in this slide is uniform. What we can describe it as the ANA staining is uniform. So this is called as the homogeneous pattern. This is called as the homogeneous pattern of ANA by immunofluorescence. This is the homogeneous pattern of ANA by immunofluorescence that can be seen. Excellent. And this homogeneous pattern can be associated with the presence of both the anti-DS DNA, double-stranded DNA antibody or the presence of anti-histone antibody in the plasma. So whenever you get a question where patient is ANA positive, ANA positive can be multiple diseases but statistically most common it is the lupus group of disease. In the lupus group of disease most common disease is SLE. SLE can be both idiopathic in majority where you will get anti-DSDNA antibody and sometime in 1 to 2 percent it can be drug induced also. In 1 to 2 percent it may be drug induced also. So the correct answer is the SLE. Correct answer is SLE. That is how you want to solve these questions. Questions are all simple only but I want us to also revise the topic, revise the point related to the question concern. So based on this, when you get SLE as the diagnosis, DSDNA is there, antihistone antibody for drug induced SLE. So can you tell me what is the most specific antibody for SLE and what will be the pattern of ANA? What will be the most specific antibody in SLE? And what is the most specific pattern of immunofluorescence study? Answer. So what we have written is the common one, sensitive one. But I want you to tell me what is most specific. Most specific is the presence of anti-Smith antibody, which gives rise to the RIM pattern. Gives rise to the RIM pattern of ANA by immunofluorescence method. Very good everyone. So Akka, Swati, Nihal, Champ. Anna Champ, naam mein hi Champ hai. Very good. I love it. Uh, you know, interesting names we find when we are doing scrolling through the chat and those names sticks to you. Right. So anti-Smith pattern. Anti-Smith is the antibody with RIM pattern. Chal. Excellent. Going on to question number two. Going on to question number 2. So when a 34 year old female presents to the rheumatology clinic with facial puffiness. So the age group is now a middle aged female who has presented with the facial puffiness. Who has presented with the facial puffiness and pedal edema. Patient has a history of Reynolds phenomena during her adolescence. Investigation reveals that she has got a significant titer of ANA by immunofluorescence method. Immunofluorescence method and based on the immunofluorescence pattern, what is the most probable diagnosis? Chal. So what is most probable diagnosis? Yaha par multiple questions. First question I want you to tell me. What do you mean by significant titers of ANA? Very good. I am very happy all of you are getting the correct answer and I am sure you are going to do as well in the exam also. So few questions. First, what is significant titer of ANA when the titers are more than 1 is to 160 
titers are considered significant for autoimmune disease. In the autoimmune disease, ANA can be seen with Sikka syndrome, scleroderma, polymyositis, all of them. But very good. Yes, everyone. So, Reynolds phenomena favors the diagnosis of systemic sclerosis. Favors diagnosis of systemic sclerosis. Patient is having skin involvement along with history of Reynolds, which favors diagnosis systemic sclerosis. But very good. It is the pattern. The pattern you can see here. This is called as the centromere pattern. It is like a spindle shape. You can see this is the centromere pattern which you can see. So spindle shaped or the centromere pattern on the ANA by immunofluorescence. This is the centromere pattern of ANA by immunofluorescence which is associated with the anti-centromere antibody. Associated with the anti-centromere antibody which is specific for Crest syndrome. Very good. The anti-centromere antibody which is associated with the Crest syndrome which is also known as the limited form of systemic sclerosis. So correct answer is B that is Crest syndrome which is also known as the limited form of systemic sclerosis. Also known as limited form of systemic sclerosis we can say associated with the centromere antibody. It is a specific antibody associated with the Crest syndrome. We can say that associated with Crest syndrome. So quickly I want you to tell me what are the full form of the Crest syndrome. That also let's complete here. What is the full form of the Crest syndrome. So we will write them here full form of Crest syndrome. So two lines for E. I always say that in class also. So what are the features when patient along with Reynolds patient presents with predominantly cutaneous symptom. There is calcinosis. There is Reynolds phenomena. There is presence of esophageal dysmotility. Presence of esophageal dysmotility is present. There is sclerodactyly and there is the telangiectasia. And there is the telangiectasia is present in the patient. Then you know there is going to be the patient having Crest syndrome. Patient having Crest syndrome. So excellent. We got our first answer correct. Second answer also correct. Excellent. So coming to the third picture in front of you. Coming to third picture that is in front of us. We come to next question here. Chal. So give me the answer for this please. So when a young lady. When a young lady. Very good. Very good, very good. All are right, all are right, very happy. When a young lady presented to the dermatology clinic with the following skin rash. So identify the rash for me. I think that will be the most simple one. But nonetheless, I always say in class, there are no questions that are simple or difficult. There are no questions that are simple or clear tough. What are they? They are either the questions that you know and the ones that you don't know. What you know always appears simple. What you don't know appears difficult. So when anybody comes and tells me, oh, it was very tough paper. Tough paper means apni fad gai. Anna? So we had very limited knowledge and we did not know majority of the questions. Otherwise, most of the questions, rheumatology is always a cakewalk. Yes, it is the typical blood red color rash sparing nasolabial fold. Blood red color rash having sparing nasolabial fold. So we are thinking of SLE. So the finding is SLE and correct statement regarding the diagnosis. 
So diagnosis, it is the specific feature of SLE. So it is a characteristic feature of SLE is a true statement is a true statement absolutely correct it is the characteristic feature of sle number two steroids are indicated for the treatment answer yes or no answer yes all patient with diagnosed case of sle must be treated with steroid only the dose and route of steroid can be variable can be variable Otherwise, steroids are indicated for the treatment. Now, take it forward. All diagnosed patient must receive HCQ therapy, also true statement. Because steroids are only for acute treatment of symptom and to get remission. But all of them must receive HCQ. So, HCQ is the hydroxychloroquine. HCQ is the hydroxychloroquine which is considered the backbone, the most important drug for prophylaxis. Hydroxychloroquine is among the safest agent. It is among the safest steroid sparing agent and hence it is given to all cases. Hence it is most preferred in SLE to maintain remission. Most preferred in SLE to maintain remission. Whatever the good work is started by the steroid, maintain remission. Whatever good work is started by the steroid can be maintained by giving hydroxychloroquine therapy. So we can say that in this question all are true statements. We can say all are true statements in this patient. There is no problem, but very good. I was going to come to that, but Yadvir Chahar is already one step ahead. Anna, ekdam UV style. Okay, chalo, ekdam bull's eye maculopathy. So, what are the adverse drug reactions of hydroxychloroquine, which you mentioned clearly, is one is the bull's eye maculopathy. One toxicity is the bull's eye maculopathy, which is an irreversible retinal toxicity, which is the irreversible retinal toxicity, which you want to avoid. And number two, very good, is the risk of torsa D points. It is the risk of torsa D point because it can cause prolongation of QTC. So there are the two important side effect that you want to monitor for the bull's eye maculopathy and the prolonged QTC. And that is why indirect way of asking what will you monitor? You want to do annual fundoscopy. You want to do fundoscopy and ECG monitoring for the corrected QT interval. So the monitoring when patient is receiving HCQ therapy is HCQ therapy is to do fundoscopy and prolonged QTC. So Rajat Bhamik, yes, these side effects are dose dependent side effect. So higher the dose, more the chances of QT prolongation, more the chances of the retinal toxicity. So you have to monitor irrespective because risk is more, but come risk is me kya pata. So we have to monitor all the patient for both these toxicity, fundoscopy and ECG monitoring. Excellent answer. Okay, everybody, sahi chal raha. So we have identified following up with the questions and points related to that topic. So take this forward. Now same picture has come, but what is changed? Now this is based on your diagnostic test. Young lady presented to dermatology clinic with the following rash. So obviously we are suspecting diagnosis of SLE. We are suspecting diagnosis of SLE in this patient because she has come with malar rash. So which one of the thing, which one of the answer should all the following test can be used to confirm diagnosis of the SLE except for which is exception to the rule 
So in short, I am asking you, which are the immunological criteria? Which are the immunological criteria for the diagnosis of SLE? In the immunological criteria, there are total five tests now, which we can do to confirm diagnosis of SLE. We can do ANA because it is the most sensitive. We can do DSDNA. We can also do anti-Smith because it is the most specific. We can do anti-phospholipid antibody and we can ask for serum complement levels. We can ask for the serum complement levels. We can ask for except for anti-erythrocyte antibody. You cannot do that anymore. Anti-erythrocyte antibody, you will never see it in practice, the name because the commercial name it is called as DCT. The commercial name of the test is DCT, that is direct Coombs test. Commercial name for the test is the direct Coombs test. We can go use for the diagnosis, it used to be, but it has got both less than 30% sensitive and specific. Hence, it is no longer recommended. Previously it was, but now it is no longer recommended for the diagnosis of SLE after the ULAR update. According to ULAR update, no longer it is correct. Very good. So we can use all the other criteria. So, which are the correct answer? We can do ANA, we can do anti-Smith, we can do anti-DSDNA serum complement level and anti-phospholipid antibody are correct answers for the diagnosis except for anti-erythrocyte antibody. Anti-erythrocyte is yes, used for prognosis only. So, very good. It has only prognostic role in SLE now. It has only prognostic role in confirmed cases of SLE, not for confirming diagnosis. Confirmed SLE cases, we can use it for prognosis only. Now, Buzz Lightyear, lovely name, Buzz Lightyear, and a creating buzz. So, that is antihistone antibody. Antihistone antibody is for the drug induced SLE. Is for the drug induced SLE. It is drug induced SLE are very rare. They have to be clinically suspected. Patient having more than two month history of drug use. Then you can ask for antihistone antibody. Okay. Right. So let us take that forward. Let us take this question forward. Very good. So come to question number five. Question number 5. So, we will change the image also now. Come to question number 5. So, look at the image carefully and then give me the correct answer. Right? Any other not used? No. No other used. Only 5 immunological criteria are there. So, Dr. Anura, only 5 tests we can do for confirming diagnosis of SLE. Okay. So, come to the question 30, question number 5, question number 5. Okay, so Dr. Anurag, other than 5, nothing is used for diagnosis. Right? Other than the 5, nothing is used for diagnosis. So, how it is? When everyone answers A, Are bapre, jara dhyan se dekho, dhyan se dekho, dhyan se dekho. Hmm? So, again, let's read the question together. A 30-year-old lady presents to the rheumatology clinic with inflammatory joint pain for since 4 to 5 months. She has low-grade fever associated with late loss which are non-specific mediators of inflammation. So, I am written down here, Rebeta, oh, based on the radiological finding, radiological finding. All of you are forgetting that. Yes, the deformity from outside is the Schwann neck deformity. 
एक्सटर्नली इट इज द श्वान नेक डिफॉर्मिटी एक्सटर्नली विच यू कैन सी ऑन द एग्जामिनेशन बट वॉट यू आर गेटिंग यूर इज द रेडियोलॉजी डज नॉट शो इरोजन देर आर नो बोन इरोजन ऑन द रेडियोलॉजी देर आर नो बोन इरोजन ऑन द रेडियोलॉजी सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द जेकॉर्ड्स आर्थ्रोपति This is called as Jacobs arthropathy. So even though from outside, from externally, the clinical presentation and the pattern, clinical presentation and the deformity, what they do? They mimic RA. What is the word we have to use? They mimic RA, but it is not actually RA. because ra is always erosive ra is always erosive within 3 months of the inflammation ra will develop ra will develop the problem so correct answer here is not ra but correct answer is sle correct answer is sle ra is not answer it looks like ra but ra it is always develop erosions always develop erosions when the disease become more than 3 months duration when disease becomes more than 3 months duration there will always be erosions present the same one i posted as the single day on a image based one question on youtube so yes this is a very important point it looks like ra but the diagnosis is based on radiological finding tells me that it is not ra jacobs arthropathy can you tell me which other condition jacobs arthropathy not difference and how differentiate b option all these arthritis syndrome are erosive beta all these are erosive all arthritis are erosive that's what we want to make all arthritis are erosive not anywhere else so all these spondyloarthropathies also are erosive in nature erosive you see then you can mark them as the correct answer okay so this jacobs arthropathy was first described jacobs arthropathy was first described in the acute rheumatic fever in the rheumatic fever that's why even common viva question rheumatic fever is also never erosive there is never irreversible deformity it causes never causes irreversible deformity that is why we call in rheumatic fever in the rheumatic fever what will you get in rheumatic fever you will always get non erosive non erosive arthritis we use the dictum no rheumatic fever bites the heart licks the joint bites the heart but licks the joint if no radiology picture is given i am now lakshmi that is depending on what is given then either specifically question mein pucha na that specifically i said diagnosis based on the radiological finding if radiology is not given there would have been something else they would have given you the antibody present they can give us antibody or the pattern or associated finding accordingly we can choose correct answer take this forward to question number 6 chalo simple ones so simple one question yes subhash kumar arthropathy is another name for arthritis joint involvement that's all disease of joint is arthropathy arthropathy includes arthralgia also arthropathy literally means the disease of the joint arthritis is more specific arthritis is more specific chal help me with this question now so when a 34 year old female presents to the rheumatology clinic we have discussed this disease before facial puffiness and history of renaults phenomena but that time we saw with immunofluorescence pattern but now what is this most specific finding chalo tell me diagnosis is correct b b b diagnosis is correct 
but what is this finding tell me the most specific finding in the systemic sclerosis in the specific the most specific cutaneous finding the most specific cutaneous finding this is called as shortening of the digits this is called as shortening of the digits it is the finding there is the shortening there is the shortening of the digits which can be seen the toes as well as the fingers of the hands shortening of the digit is the most specific finding in the patient with systemic sclerosis most specific finding in systemic sclerosis so what are the characteristic features this is the most specific finding so follow up question to that follow up question to that what is the cause of the following finding why does this finding occur okay it is most specific all right but what is the mechanism behind the most specific finding does it occur due to tightening of the skin does it occur due to visceral sclerosis does it occur due to microangiopathy or due to gangrene due to vascular involvement so what is the cause of this finding what is the cause of this finding yes you said it is the specific finding diagnosis is scleroderma but the cause of the finding is the microangiopathy very good is the microangiopathy so it is the microangiopathy which causes auto resorption microangiopathy causes auto resorption of the terminal phalanx there is auto resorption of the terminal phalanx due to ischemia due to the ischemia which is secondary to capillary involvement that is microangiopathy capillary involvement that is microangiopathy causes the absorption of the terminal phalanx so compared to gangrene it is a painless process there is also no no blackening this is compared to gangrene this is a painless shortening without discoloration there is no discoloration or blackening which is seen there is only shortening of the digits there is only going to be shortening of the digits so immediate question for you what will be the most sensitive test to detect the abnormality what will be the most sensitive test to detect the abnormality and you have to also tell me what is the earliest finding in the test what is the earliest finding that you will see in the test two questions are there what is the most sensitive test to detect microangiopathy and what is the earliest finding so yes subhash has started with first correct answer the most sensitive test yes is to ask for nail fold capillaroscope is to ask for nail fold capillaroscopy you want to do number one test but one level more i am asking you what will be earliest finding in the nail fold capillaroscopy which will tell me there is the problem what will be very good dilated capillaries earliest finding on the is the dilated capillaries initially there is increased tortuosity there are the dilated capillaries which come first as the dilated capillaries as the disease progresses as the disease progresses there is going to be loss of the density then there will be loss of density loss of number of capillaries will increase that is second stage 
initially there is dilated capillaries followed by the loss of density and in the last one is the last stage in only in the severe cases only in the severe cases there is distorted architecture there is the distorted architecture of the capillaries so these are the various stages through which the disease goes through and eventually blood supply becomes totally gone in the severe cases there is going to be the distorted architecture of the capillaries and then it is totally gone the complete ischemia will develop that is the third and final stage first stage you get only dilated capillaries yes so that is another guess so image based mcq ke sath sath sound based mcq everybody is guessing whether it is a bird whether it is puppy it is definitely not superman but it is our super dog uh, who is playing with the squeezy toy so yes so mystery solved so parrot on a doctor anurag is guessing parrot chal so we have got here psoriatic arthritis skin arthritis with dip on x ray pencil in cup deformity with sl so that's a different uh, mystery we are just coming to that question yeah we are just coming to that question uh, that we will solve in few minutes we will solve that question yeah so how to this differentiate psoriatic arthropathy so mystery avi we will come to that question yeah okay chal so question number 8 so identify the diagnosis in the patient who is a middle aged lady with a history of proximal muscle weakness and weight loss so the clues given are she is a middle aged lady so middle aged means the age group is 30 to 50 years female dominant disease having history of proximal muscle weakness and weight loss is present so what is the diagnosis and what is the sign so very good everybody got both the answers correct so patient this is the gottrans rash this is the gottrans rash which is the most specific sign it is the most specific sign in the patient with the dermatomyositis most specific sign in the patient with dermatomyositis this is the most specific sign which we can see that is uh, in the dermatomyositis so only myositis with rash is dermatomyositis so what are peculiar points two questions i will ask you which are the other skin findings which are the other skin or cutaneous findings in the patient with dermatomyositis and what are we worried about so tell me so other skin finding other skin finding so rash and papule isn't different are anurag so we have to look at that wo to skin mein ek bar pad lo aap theek hai rash kya hota hai papule papule bhi rash hota hai macule bhi rash hota hai sirf elevation ke upar hota hai so very good patient can have heliotropic rash over the eyelids there can be presence of v sign over the neck area or there can be presence of shawl sign over the back area there can be presence of shawl sign over the back area can be present on other features of dermatomyositis what is the most specific antibody what is the most specific antibody in the cases of myositis syndrome including dermatomyositis is the anti jo antibody <laughs> is the anti jo antibody so incidentally my dog's name is also joey and we call him jo so in myositis he probably came to give a clue to us the anti jo 
which is also known as the anti-synthetase antibody. Known as the anti-synthetase antibody is present. Anti-synthetase antibody is going to be present. And the important point is 15 to 25 percent cases of dermatomyositis may be associated with malignancy. May be associated with the malignancy which is the typical feature of dermatomyositis. So even if the patient has got like weight loss, the weight loss is given, we have to investigate for presence of malignancy. We want to investigate for the presence of malignancy. We want to check for dermatomyositis only one present with risk of malignancy. Only one present with risk of malignancy. We want to see. Right. So, chal. So, this is what we have. Question number eight. We have done one question. Myositis. So, polymyositis has no association with malignancy, Sayat. So, polymyositis, no association. Polymyositis is the classical young women and response is very good to the treatment. So, when you get malignancy, ovarian, GI, yes, GI, ovarian, hematological. So, malignancy can include, it can be the GI malignancy. There can be hematological malignancy or it can be ovarian that is gonadal. Ovarian malignancy also can be seen in this patient. Can be seen in this patient. Can be associated with dermatomyositis. Okay. Chal. So coming to next one. No problem. All is good. So let us come to the next problem. Question number 9. When a case, so this is for the person who are getting confused with psoriatic RA and SLE, psoriatic RA and SLE, when a case of inflammatory polyarthritis, first define it for me, what is inflammatory polyarthritis? Any arthritis having prolonged and severe, prolonged and severe morning stiffness. Prolonged and severe morning stiffness is present. Prolonged and severe morning stiffness is present with relief on activity, relief on exercise. That is the definition of inflammatory polyarthritis. That is definition of inflammatory polyarthritis. Now the patient is having symmetrical involvement of small joints of the hand and was suspected to be a case of rheumatoid arthritis because that is most common cause. But the diagnosis was deferred based on the following clinical finding. So tell me the finding. Very good. So patient can have similar patient but oncolysis the presence of nail pitting or the nail peeling. The presence of nail peeling which is called as the oncolysis is the most common extra articular feature. Is the most common extra articular feature. Extra articular feature in the patient with psoriatic arthropathy and it precedes the problem. It precedes the joint involvement in more than 85%. Precedes the arthritis in more than 85% of the cases. Precedes the arthritis in more than 85% of the cases and that is why even though the pattern was of the rheumatoid arthritis, pattern was the rheumatoid arthritis, the clinical diagnosis will be psoriatic arthropathy. Clinical diagnosis will be psoriatic arthropathy, right? So, how to differentiate WBC count? So, gout, CPPD, RA, 
Anna, so Dr. Anurag, you can just, you know, follow the charts. I, will, I have given in the class how to differentiate different types of arthritis just based on the pattern. And in the DVT, I will also be discussing how to differentiate between the crystal induced arthritis and other inflammatory arthritis. Yeah, so definitely I will share with you. So the important differentiating chart, if you are attending DVT, definitely you will be recipient of the book where you can get it then. Right, so ray distribution seen in psoriatic means I don't know, but the psoriatic arthropathy, the dreaded complication. So what we call dreaded complication, no problem Anurag. So aage jaise aap attend kar rahe ho, agar aap DVT attend karoge, prepare kar rahe ho, sirf DVT ke liye aa jaiye. So aur bhi hum points karte jayenge aur we will be discussing. Aisa kuch nahi hai, the knowledge is always free. Wo to sab jaga available hai. I will share it here also. I will put it in the PDF when I share. Theek hai? So psoriatic arthropathy mein important hota hai is the dreaded complication is the arthritis mutilans the arthritis mutilans is considered the dreaded complication it can totally cause destruction of the dip joint destruction of the dip joint can occur destruction of dip joint can occur which gives you the pencil cup appearance pencil in cup appearance on the x-ray on the radiological finding you will get in the patient with psoriatic arthropathy which will be the preferred demand what will be the preferred demand treatment option which will be the preferred demand in the patient with psoriatic arthropathy if there are radiological changes come on which are the problems which will be the radiological changes are present then what would be the preferred demand in this patient subash correct yes aflatoon aflatoon to ekdam aflatoon hai methotrexate because methotrexate along with being the demand also controls the skin progression also con controls the skin progression. You know, it's always lovely. Anna momos bolta me too. Anna momos se me too. Very good. So methotrixate, yes, is the correct answer. That is question number nine for you. Theek hai. Let us take the question forward to question number 10. So this again, one more answer coming up for our Anurag fellow, Anurag doctor, chali. So, elderly person, female, presented with acute worsening of pain and redness in the knee and the hip joint. So, age group up notice karenge is elderly lady. Joint affected is the knee and the hip joint. And there is severe prolonged stiffness is present, indicating that there is, indicating that there is going to be there is going to be inflammatory arthritis. Now, X-ray reveals chondrocalcinosis. Chondro ka matlab kya? Cartilage. There is going to be cartilage, calcium deposit in the cartilage. There is going to be calcium deposits in the cartilage. When there are cartil calcium deposit in the cartilage, that means there is deposit in the bone. Indirectly, it is deposited in the joint also. Deposited in the joint also. Synovial fluid was done. And what does that show? It shows rhomboid shaped crystals. It shows the rhomboid shaped crystals are present. Rhomboid shaped crystals are diagnosis of calcium pyrophosphate crystal. They are the calcium pyrophosphate crystals are the rhomboid shaped crystal which get deposited, which get deposited in the elderly. It is the rhomboid shaped crystal which get deposited in the elderly and they are gold standard for pseudogout. They are gold standard for pseudogout. 
which is also called CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate disease. It is also called as the CPPD, that is the calcium pyrophosphate disease. We are going to call this the calcium pyrophosphate disease. So, whenever the patient is a young female, think of RA. Looks like RA, but DIP is affected, mark psoriatic. When patient is a young male, positive history, spine involvement, answer is ankylosing spondylitis. And asymmetrical large joint, IBD versus reactive. And when you get inflammatory posse arthritis. When you get an inflammatory posse arthritis, always think of crystal induced arthritis. Posse ka matlab kya? Less than 4 joint involvement. Always think of crystal induced arthritis. So, Anurag, if patient is having polyarthritis, think of it as RA. But if it is posse arthritis, think of the crystal. Think of the crystal also. Among the crystal, most common is gout. But gout is a disease due to deposition of monosodium urate crystal. Deposition of monosodium urate crystal, which are needle shaped crystal, which are the needle shaped crystal, will be seen in patient with gout. The age is different also. We are having different joint involvement. Gout is affecting the grade 2, first metatarsophalangeal joint. Here it is going to be the knee and the hip joint. The knee and the hip joint are affected. So I thought ki yaar 10 question rakhte hain sahi rahega. Anna 7 to 8, 1 hour class hai. We want to review one topic. To chalo just for good luck. Anna shagun ke liye ek or topic dal dete hain. 11 question karenge. Anna so in India we are very very you know what we can say superstitious bolo. Anna auspicious rehne do. So 11 question karte hain. Taki is bar aapka rheumatology mein 100% score hona chahi. So, you all can make resolution like BJP. Is par pura 100% in rheumatology question. 100% you should get. Rheumatology, I'll again tell you, very scoring topic. If you get it right, you will your rank will jump. If you get it wrong, your rank will go down. Because these are questions that you know or you don't know. There is not much to guess. These are evidence-based, clear-cut questions. Chalo, give me the correct answer for this last question. Haste haste nikalte hai. So look at the read the question. When a patient is having a 35 year old male presented with hematuria, patient is having hematuria, renal involvement. Also, there is joint arthralgia, which is non specific. Patient is having asymmetrical peripheral neuropathy. Isko kya bolna? Asymmetrical peripheral neuropathy is called as MNM, mononeuritis multiplex. The mononeuritis multiplex. Among the autoimmune disease, among the autoimmune disease, most common autoimmune disease causing the mononeuritis multiplex is PAN, followed by systemic sclerosis, followed by Sikka syndrome. So, there can be mononeuritis multiplex also. There is hematuria, arthralgia and now patient comes with episode of blood in the sputum. So, patient is having both hematuria plus hemoptysis. Hematuria plus hemoptysis and that is why we suspected pulmonary renal syndrome. I am not saying that is the diagnosis. We suspected pulmonary renal syndrome because patient had got two organ involvement. Since there is any other organ involvement, it cannot be good pasture. Good pasture is affecting only two organs. Any other site is affected, it cannot be good pasture. Good pasture is affecting only two sites. But other symptoms like joint involvement can be non-specifically present. 
can be non specifically present but diagnosis is test is coming from which one renal angiography was done renal angiography was done and what does it show you can see the renal angiography shows micro aneurysm at the bifurcation there is the presence of micro aneurysm right at the bifurcation at the bifurcation what is another name for bifurcation nodes of the artery nodes of the renal arteries so when you travel by metro junction is also called nodes the bifurcation is also called as nodes so wherever the artery is bifurcating you are having the aneurysm bifurcation or at the nodes and that is why the diagnosis is polyarteritis nodosa diagnosis is polyarteritis nodosa multiple arteries are affected right at the nodes multiple arteries are affected right at the nodes but is it a really a pulmonary renal syndrome no it only mimics pulmonary renal syndrome it only mimics pulmonary renal syndrome because it never causes gn it is not a true pulmonary renal syndrome because it never causes glomerulonephritis itself but rarely it can cause in 1 to 2% due to bronchial artery involvement bronchial artery involvement can lead to hemoptysis bronchial artery involvement leads to hemoptysis and that is why it mimics pulmonary renal syndrome it looks like pulmonary renal syndrome but it is not a pulmonary renal syndrome why not good pasture because good pasture can affect only two sides good pasture can affect only two sides only the two sides that is alveolar basement membrane and the glomerular basement membrane that is why it is also called basement membrane disease it is also called as the basement membrane disease only so only two sides are affected two sides are affected right so pan hematuria cannot occur ore bap re anurag kalita it can occur re rupture of aneurysm can cause hematuria rupture of aneurysm causes hematuria these micro aneurysm no when they rupture they cause hematuria when they rupture they cause hematuria so very much it can occur symptom is hematuria without glomerulonephritis hematuria without glomerulonephritis so yes vaishnavi garudkar hematuria occurs due to rupture of this micro aneurysm you can get hematuria in the pan you can get hematuria in pan right so that are our 11 questions that are our yes both subhash kumar both lung and kidney are affected any other site affected cannot be good pasture any other site affected cannot be good pasture why blood in sputum krish indian same bronchial artery aneurysm bronchial artery aneurysm rupture can cause hemoptysis bronchial artery aneurysm can cause hemoptysis right so that is what we have so any questions related to medicine of course we are available on other platform you can also note down the email id and we will try to answer the questions for you so it is important that we prepare the topics together and common topics keep revising common topics keep revising every rheumatology sle arthritis pan is always important sayak Ch uh, chakraborty mpa will have anka positive anka positive disease will become mpa 
and there are no aneurysms. There are no aneurysms in MPA. There are no aneurysm in microscopic polyangitis. This aneurysm is 100% ray aneurysm at the nodes. Aneurysm at the nodes is important. Yes. So I am, you know, I am an Indian. Like everybody says, like Chakde India Jaisa Yaad Karo. Where are you from? Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Delhi, Amritsar, Mad Bolo. Kahan hai? You are Indian. Because I am Tamilian, born in Delhi, brought up in Maharashtra. Mix of all. Right? Chal. All the very best. See you in DVT. All the best for the exams, for all the others. Students, keep working hard. Okay? Don't forget to party also. Enjoy life. Work hard also. All is well. Good.